Hey, how's it going guys? I am coming to you here do a, uh, a quick video on how to create a successful sports blog. Um, now there's going to be a thousand different videos that you can watch um, that are going to be better than this video to watch in how to create a blog site. Um, however, while a lot of those tactics are going to work for a sports blog, there are a couple of things that are unique to the sports blogging world that perhaps aren't as um, aren't as useful uh, in a regular blogging world. Um, I guess some can transfer over, but you'll you'll get the gist. Um, so. I am the owner slash operator of ChicagoStyleSports.com. Um, it's a sports blog site that covers the Chicago Cubs, Chicago White Sox, Chicago Bulls, Chicago Bears, Chicago Blackhawks. Um, so in the site, something that uh, I definitely stress to do and especially what happens in our most popular of posts, blog posts, are finding unique content. So what I mean by that, um, a sports blog in today's online media, is it's not going to exist if you are just posting game updates or you're posting um, recent news like player X broke his ankle and is going to be out for six months. Um, as soon as stuff like that happens, there are 10,000 other sites out there that are going to post the same story and face it, in 99% of the time, they're going to do it better than what you can do it. Um, now that's not to say that your writing isn't going to be good, your website isn't going to be good, it's just the average user is going to turn to your ESPNs, your Fox Sports, your CBS Sports, uh, Comcast Sports, whatever it might be, they're going to turn to those outlets before they're going to turn to you because those are the trusted outlets, those are the places that they know they can go to for uh, trusted, uh, non-biased sports content that's going to tell them those sorts of stories. Um, if they want a game recap, they're going to go to somebody that's paid by ESPN to write a game recap about the game that they were at. Um, and very surprisingly, there's not a lot of people that are going to make every effort they can to click on a blog post to read what happened in last night's game. They're, they're not doing it on the big websites unless there's something overwhelmingly unique that happened in that game that uh, you can tell a story about. It. They're not going to do that. Um, what people are going to click on your stuff for is when you're bringing them unique things. Um, my website posted a blog about how uh, Chicago Cub players are pointing to the base that they're standing on um, because they're making fun of one of the other players on, on the team for getting picked off of a base. Uh, we found multiple gifts. We put that on our website, put it out there, and that post has garnered somewhere near or somewhere over uh, 12,000 uh, hits for that post. Um, so that is something that people are going to turn to you for. Um, you're finding unique content. You're putting it that out there. You're sharing that and that unique content is something that motivates others to share your content as well. Um, you know, just just look at your Facebook or your Twitter or um, Google Plus or you know, however you're going to plan on putting your con content out to the world. Look at that and 
you know, if you're putting it out there to 400 people, 500 people, a thousand people, um, you're going to need all of them to share that story for your content to get any type of like viral sort of um, uh, viral sort of uh, uh, momentum. I guess I'm looking for. Um, so you're going to have to find unique stuff to put onto your website and that unique content is going to motivate your readers to then share that content. Um, that's how you get somewhat successful blog posts in, um, in this current landscape that we're in. Um, another area to really look at when you're when you're talking sports and writing a sports blog is, um, you know, we have your unique content. The other thing is you're not going to want to either assume too much or assume too little with your readers. Um, what I mean about that, um, baseball has forever been a huge stats and stats geeky sort of sport. Um, there are hundreds of websites that are dedicated just to compiling data and rearranging that data to put it into new forms of stats uh, just to put it out there and um, that's what they do. They're, they're creating those stats to put out there and millions of people go to those websites and they trust those websites to provide them with those stats. Um, the thing is, is your typical readers, they're not going to know what most of those stats mean. Um, now, there are definitely going to be some, and this is where you're going to not assume too little. Um, so, don't be afraid to use those stats, to talk about those sorts of stats, to use sabermetrics, um, even some of the most advanced uh, sort of advanced stats that are out there. Don't be afraid to use it um, because those stat head type guys are going to want to read that. They're, they're going to want to see that sort of information. Um, they're going to want you to use that sort of information to back up your points when you're putting that content out there. Now, where you're not assuming too much is where you have to also give those readers that don't know what that stat is. And in a lot of cases with sabermetrics or advanced stats in baseball, um, you're going to have to give the opportunity for those people that um, don't know and then just simply don't care a way to find out what that stat means and how that supports your argument, your point of view, your opinion, um, you know, whatever that might be. So providing them either with a direct link back to the original site where they explain what that stat means. So Fangraphs has a great definitions page on just about every stat that they have out there. Um, so providing a link back to that to explain those stats. Um, the other thing that you can do too, and I've seen others do this, is they've written I don't want to say ghost articles, but they've gone and they've talked about um, what does this stat mean. And they have it and they link it back in their own story. So you're now creating a, a loop within your blog site where, um, you know, maybe somebody that doesn't know what FIP is, they click on the link that you've uh, provided there for them to learn about FIP it goes back into another portion of your website. Um, they learn about it and now they return back to the article to continue to read. Um, 
So you're not assuming too much, you're not assuming too little with your readers, um, and that's going to go a long way because um, you know those that don't know are you're either going to lose them or they're going to ask or um, they're just going to ignore um, from that point on. Um, another thing is going to be uh, it's going to be using those bigger websites to help provide a point. So similar to using like a fan graph site or using baseball reference websites or prospectus websites or, you know, what, whatever it might be, um, use those bigger websites to help you in your content as well. So if you're putting something out there that perhaps you've read through tweets or things like that and you're going to provide a point and it's a point that maybe no one else is making um, don't be afraid to go out to those ESPN sites or other big websites use them to help build your credibility in what you're talking about um, as much as you could use those bigger sites to bring it in um, your average user they see that and you're you're almost stealing from those bigger websites credibility to add to your credibility now I'm not saying go out there and you find an article on ESPN.com and just rewrite that article and at the bottom of your post uh, kind of provide a link back to the ESPN article like that's just you're just stealing their idea to put onto your website what I am saying is um, go to those ESPNs find quotes use that quote in your article and make sure that the reader knows that you went to xyz.com and found that quote and you provided it um, the reader is going to realize, hey, that's a website I trust. They talk to this guy. This guy is saying this. That backs up his point. I'm trusting you now. Um, use that. Um, or maybe you have a, a different idea on something that may happen throughout the course of a season. Um, go to those bigger websites and find articles that may support the reasons that something like that could make sense and bring those articles into your article. Um, again, not stealing, but leaning on the credibility of those websites to build your own credibility. A last piece here um, before we go is and this is a very delicate subject, but you have to write titles that are going to incite a reader to click on yours over somebody else that might be out there. Um, now, where this is sensitive and it's tricky is you don't want to write clickbait titles. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about dressing up your title where it entices somebody to click on yours as opposed to somebody else's. So I had talked about writing unique content. Um, there's though the, your unique content is what's going to really drive your website success. But when you're in the sports world and you're writing about sports in general on your sports blog, you're going to have to incorporate a lot of the day-to-day -day type stuff. Um, if there's a trade, you have to get it onto your website if you want to continue to build off of any of the credibility or popularity that you might be growing on from your uni content. Um, I know it's a little bit of a 
it's counterintuitive in, in, compared to what I've been talking about the entire time, but these posts are posts that you're putting out there because you need to cover specific events, you need to cover specific news. Um, you're not spending millions of hours trying to write a thousand word, two thousand word type of blog post on this. You're writing to get the news out there and making sure that you're part of the sea of people covering the news. Um, now, when you do this, that's where you have to dress up your titles. Um, don't be afraid to use excitable words. Don't be afraid to make bold predictions. Um, don't be afraid to to use English to bring people into your site, but refrain from that clickbait title. Um, so, you know, and the other thing, an area here too is, um, and while not trying to use clickbait like titles, um, you're going to, sorry, I'm trying to merge. Um, while not trying to use clickbait titles, also don't try to give the story away in your title. Um, when you're giving stories away in your title, it's it gives a reader a reason to not click. Um, so there's a happy medium, there's a happy balance. You can give a reader some information in your title. You want to give a reason, a reader a reason to click on your title. Um, you don't want to give readers reasons not to click on your titles. Um, but those are areas that definitely are going to help in building a successful sports blog. Um, I am building a sports blog that has positive momentum. It's going good, um, but uh, I, I also want to refrain from saying successful. Um, my knowledge comes from, of course, writing on my own websites, writing for other uh, people's websites, tr doing trainings through some of the other people that I have written for their websites. So. You know, there's a lot that goes into writing. There's a lot that goes into creating content that's going to uh, possibly go viral for yourself on a website. And if you're using some of these tips in your websites, um, it, it's going to go a long way and you're going to see that your, your readers, your hits, they're going to go up because you're using those tips that we've brought to you here. Um, make sure to give us a follow. Um, check me out on Twitter at RLJMB23. Um, make sure to check out my, my website, chicagostylesports.com. Um, and check out the Twitter sites for Chicago Style Sports. It is Shy, C H I, Style Sports. Um, and, uh, you know, definitely let me know uh, what you thought of this. Let me know if there's any additional information that you would like to know. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll continue to do uh, these sorts of posts in the future. Thanks for watching, and I hope that this helps your sports blog gain more success.